Still talking? This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go from now until, uh, let's see, midnight Eastern Daylight Time, like 10.06 Eastern Daylight Time here in the United States of America, and we'll get to our citizen panel in just about 25 minutes from right now, but let's talk to a very funny guy. Okay, it's time to go out to Las Vegas, and uh, let me see here. Let me just dial up a number here. There we go. Here we go again. Take 17. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Stephen. Technical Burr. difficulties, right? You ran out of railback batteries? No, no I, I ran I did something. Something went wrong. These railbacks are faulty. The cat won't jump through the nine. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Cats going, fuck you, you come through the nine, motherfucker. I come through that nine no more. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. And Hello, everybody. Las, How are you? Las, How's everybody? Lost Wages, wonderful, Nevada. Wonderful of, yeah. The wonderful world of internet. Yeah. So, how are you doing? Good, good. Just hanging out, uh, waiting to get money from a gig I did on Friday so I can pay some bills. And until then, I'm just sitting around, might go to the gym later. I don't know. I, I, th- th- today. I think it's amazing that you're getting this much work. You're getting more work now than you ever got by staying in the Bay Area. It's amazing. I know. I was getting, well, I was, I was getting <laughs> as much work in the 80s, but uh, not, the, not the last time I was there. So uh, I was like nine-tenths retired in the Bay Area, and now here I'm a working comedian. So who knew? Yeah, yeah. And, and welcome with open arms, I would imagine, huh? I mean, it was real nice to me. You know, everybody's here. I made new friends, and I see old friends pass through town. It's a lot of fun here. I really enjoy it. What they do, really do. What are the owners of the clubs like? Are they are they decent? Or well, I don't meet the oh, I, I meet the bookers and the other. A lot of the cases, other comics are the bookers, mm-hmm. and so it's like it's one of us instead of one of them. And so far, everybody's been very cool. I had one. Uh, there was one club bonkers. I had trouble saying. They wanted a high resolution picture of me, and I don't know what high resolution is. I'm computer free challenge, so I sent him a picture. Well, we can't use that one. I sent him another picture. We can't use that one. How about this one? We can't use that one. Finally, I sent him one they could use, but uh, other than that, everything's been pretty smooth. So you, they call, you, you want to do a gig here for this much money? Or sure. Do you have an iPhone? I have a, I have a phone that gets stuff. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay, because uh, uh, most iPhones today, most phones today, if they're fairly recent... How many megahertz does your are high, horizontalizer are, run on? Are, are, I don't know any of these questions. I just use the phone. They're high resolution. I know you just use the phone. Okay. Wait a minute. No. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you th- oh, oh, you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Are you there? I can barely hear you. Really? You can barely again. hear me? Let me try Talk again. directly into the phone. I'm, into the phone. I'm talking Put directly. The gun down. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, so you've been working. That's good. You know? No, I'm enjoying it. I didn't, I didn't know what would happen in Vegas. I didn't know if I'd be working at all or anything. I'm just very, very fortunate, and I'm, I'm delivering. You know, I do good shows, so. Yeah. Uh, so they booked me again. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And people respect me here, I guess, because of my history. My I'm an old fucker. Yeah. So uh, everybody's, very, everybody's very nice here. I like it a lot. Age, a lot of good comics here, too. Age isn't as much of a problem there, is it, as it is, say, in San Francisco? Oh, now you sound like you're underwater again. Really? <laughs> you sound like a, 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 a question. I, I, I'm hearing that. Oh, boy. Let me, let me, let me redial you. Okay, all right. What's that? Let me, I, heard, I heard okay. That oh, was let I me heard. let me recall you. I'll call you again. Okay, here we yeah, go again. Yeah. Take four hundred and seventy-six. Anyway, uh, we're dealing with the great gods of Skype today. This is, seems to be a problem. There we go. Now you see that's not the phone ring. Oh, wait a minute. What is he calling me? Is it sharper, clearer uh, this way? Okay, this way. Yeah, yeah there we go. Can you hear me better now? 
I can always oh, listen. So, yeah, I, I can hear that. <laughs> oh, you garbled as hell there. <laughs> well, that oh, was just. That, purpose? that was. Oh, that was a little body trick that I learned uh, when I was a kid. Uh, okay. Because I used to listen to a radio show, and I can't remember which one it was. Maybe it was Fibber McGee and Molly or some show like that. Uh, and they had a guy on the show called Mr. Ripple. And he would talk, he would talk like this. All right? He would he was out of the water. All right? Now, uh, I, I didn't realize that how he did that was by taking his uh, finger and moving it in front of his lips like this. Oh, yeah. So I figured he did it with his own voice. So I learned how to talk like this. <laughs> Without using my fingers at all. And that was years yeah, later when I saw him do it that I saw him you know, in front of his lips. So, yeah. so that's one of my, my personal body tricks that I have. Do you have any personal body? You, 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 you don't have any personal body uh, stuff that you do? Personal body stuff? Like, Let's see. I used to be good at the armpit part, but uh, then uh, everybody's doing it, and uh, the trend the trend just got followed. And uh, what else? I, I can fart the Turkish national anthem if I have enough chili beans, but other from that, no, my body is not an amusement park. Really? It's, but you used to be able to do the uh, the uh, uh, arm, armpit farts, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can hit myself on the head and then play a tune like, let's see, uh, oh. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> there you there you go. I yeah. you know what I can't do? I can't whistle. I can't I can barely my lips are too big. I have big Jewish lips. Yeah, I, I don't get, know. Some people when are, I was a kid I'd whistle in. I used to inhale and I could whistle and then later on I learned how to whistle exhaling and now I can't do either. You know how people would take their fingers and they put two fingers in there. No, oh, I can never do that. I, I can, can never, never do that, that one. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, what I get. That's all the came out. <laughs> yep, that's what that's my sound too. That's a, Yeah, I can never call a taxi the old fashioned way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah right. Right, so, uh, you know. Uh, there I, was a kid in my high school, though, named Paul Zider, who could whistle. You could hear it in the next county. He was so loud. <laughs> really? I don't know how he did it, but he put the two fingers and woo. You heard it all over town. Some people know how to do it, and some people know, don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I couldn't do that. What else couldn't I do? Uh, that's about it. You know, I was pretty good at other stuff, but I, I, yeah. I didn't talk like this. So. Oh, we're running out of batteries again. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Woo-hoo, big fun. So do you pay attention to the news at all? I watch it. You know, I, I stay home a lot during the day, and I watch it. And, it, and let's say, uh, you know, I, I like to switch from CNN to Fox. Trump sucks. Trump is great. Trump sucks. Trump is great. Trump's a horrible person. Trump's God. Trump is this. Trump is this. Yeah. I watch the news. It's, it, 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 it should depress me a lot more, but I guess I'm so old now, I don't give a shit. I go, come on, Rudy, hit the planet already. Well, you know, I'm 79. I'm going to be 80 shortly. 80, the big 8 man. Yeah. And you know, you're almost as half as old as Bill Wyman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I, uh, uh, there are times I just go, what the fuck am I all upset about? It's not going to affect me. I'm going to be dead no. soon. You know? No, and do you care if, like, a school bill passes or if, you know, you need an abortion or anything? <laughs> None of this shit really affects me personally, and I don't care anymore. Well, you I know watched something? against the Vietnam War many times. I'm done. I care because, you know, I told my uh, my ex-wife, Ronnie, when I did a, a talk with her a couple of days ago, that, you know, when I was a kid, I was brought up to believe certain things about us as a country. And yeah. so when I don't see that country that was advertised to me. Ah, yeah, exactly. I Something get bothered by it. I get feeling like I'm being gypped, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, you know, so, I mean, um, uh, that that kind of bothers me in a way. Uh-huh. Uh, that we're yeah. not as good as we should be. We're not the terrific country we should be. Yeah. You know what we do? Oh, it's, yeah. it's a mess. It's a, it's a bloody mess. You know where we've been in trouble? Ever since World War II. We have never done what I would call a righteous war. 
Okay. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that was the last right before. Yeah, actually, and, 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 the and what happened when we, when we did that war, which was for the most part righteous. Okay. Yep. We were going to war because other people were being affected by it even more than exactly. us. I mean, World War II did not affect us, except we sent a lot of troops over there to defend people over there. Yep. Uh, and, of course, we were attacked by Japan, so then we had to fight on that front. That's right, yeah. But we, they, came, they started. we came back to that with the feeling that we had done something really wonderful, you know, uh -huh. that we had given of ourselves. We had sacrificed national treasure and also national, you know, human lives that yep, here sure. to do what was the right thing. And so we came out of that exactly. with this ego that we always do the right thing. And since then, uh -huh. we have never involved ourselves in a war that was nope. righteous or just. No, nope. they've all been bullshit. Yeah, Korea was bullshit. Vietnam yep. was bullshit. You know, I mean, we could go on and on about this stuff. Yep, we have sure. never engaged in another righteous war, and it's all because we felt we did the right thing in World War II, so how can we do the wrong thing? Exactly, yeah. You know? We're always right. Well, not really. And and so I, you know, when I, when, uh, like this president, I mean, I didn't think I would live to see this. I, no, know, no, I, I thought, well, he is an unhinged lunatic, I always, and something should be done, but <laughs> I always, I'm not worried. I always love political, uh, what can we call it, political... Um, uh, uh, you know, satire. Uh, yeah, oh, but sure. I, I didn't realize I was actually going to be living it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, if we I, used to watch David Fry doing, you know, really wacky political impersonations, and now we're okay. we're living through one of them. Let's go back fifteen years. You're uh, in a you're in a uh, office in Hollywood. You're a big time uh, movie mogul, uh, and I come to you with the following proposal. I've got this movie I want to do about a reality show star who decides to cash that in and run for president and wins. <laughs> It'll never happen. Get out of my office. How fast would you have thrown me out of the office if I came to uh, that I'm point? looking at a new project, Mark and Mengele. I think it's going to be great. Watch, uh, watch the fun one. I want the Nazi walk so it'll move in with a wacky alien. <laughs> Mark and Mengele. Mark and Mengele. I can't miss. It's like Hogan's Heroes and he's my favorite Marksman. I can't miss. Boy, I'll tell you, I have a friend. If you want to pitch something, and if you want to sell it, you just say, it's so-and-so meets so-and-so. And, -so. and you, you mention two past projects and that, that were big hits, and, <laughs> and you'll sell it. I'll tell you what was wonderful. I had this, I have this friend, uh, Jack Garfine, who was a movie director, a Broadway director, uh, confidant to Marilyn Monroe, discovered James Dean, you know, things like right. that. He had a lot of yeah. a lot of things where you listen to him and you go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, yeah, ooh, oh, yeah, ah. Sure. But you know the one thing that made me ooh and ah more than anything else he told me? It, during World he War II. He went James Dean the keys to his Porsche. I don't know. He, he saw him take off in that Porsche. Oh, really? He did that day? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, that's uh, scary. But anyway... No, the thing that, that got me when he said it, he was in concentration camps. Oh, Lord, uh, ouch. Yeah, yeah. Which, which Real that wasn't what impressed me. What impressed me was he met Mengele. Oh, God. Yeah. Mengele saved his, Actually, Mengele saved his life. He did. Because he, he said, how old? Uh, you're a lovely young boy. And he stroked his cheek, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the angel of death uh, yeah. stroked his cheek, and then he said, uh, "How old are you?" And, and uh, Jack was told by his mother to lie, that he say he was older than he was. So he said, "I'm 15," and he said, "Okay, well, go over there." Uh -huh. And um, he he put he sent them off to a work detail. He didn't send them off to the concentration camp, you know, the right. gas yeah. chambers, yeah. which was the other direction, and. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, as he's going with this one guy who's leading off to this work detail, he says, you know, I, that, I really should go back to that nice man and tell him I was lying about my age. And he says, just, Whoa. he <laughs> said, just keep walking. Keep walking. Yeah, just keep walking. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Mengele saved his life. I mean, it's strange. But that, that the fact that he met Mengele in Auschwitz. Yeah, who gets like meeting Roy Cohn or the devil or something like that. Well, I met Roy Cohn. Oh, that's scary, too. Oh, uh, I'm uh, not eating today. I've told you that story, haven't I? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was Can't like be motherfucker. I look at a picture of the guy. I go, whoa, that is the devil right there. Well, look so his eyes. I, I've often told people when they ask, well, what was he like? And I said, I never met the devil, but if I do, he's probably going to be like Roy Cohn. Exactly. Yeah. And oh, God, better looking. Right? And then I was listening to an interview with somebody who had. No, known Roy Cohn, and he said, "What was Roy Cohn like?" And the guy said, "If I met the devil, it would yeah. be Roy Cohn." Jeez, yeah. yeah. He I had these. Had shark- lunch with him. He said it was like having lunch with the devil. <laughs> he had these shark eyes. Had no life in them whatsoever. Yeah. You know, oh, he just was like, Ugh. you know, and they I were, just they was dead already. Oh, what a horrible, horrible human being. Horrible person. The only they person did a thing, uh, James Woods played him in some movie, and when he, the character finally dies, the doctor says, "Well, he finally did something human." <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That wasn't Angels Over America. That was was it Citizen Cone? It might have been. That. It might have been Pacino Citizen Cone. Played him, and, uh, yeah. but James Woods played him, and he did a yeah, really good job. He, uh, uh, Pacino did him, I think, in Angels Over America. Uh, angels in America. I'm, right gone. I'm gonna ruin some fucking lives. I don't know if I can buy Pacino as a ring. <laughs> I can't buy Al Pacino as anything. Who <laughs> are now? Yeah, yeah. Um, who are your favorite actors? I've never asked you that. Well, I don't know who the young ones. I don't know who today's stars are at all. You know, so yeah, this week on Ellen, Philip Kalika, uh, Michael Palafroni. Uh, I don't know who any of these people are, so I can't name any of the modern ones, but I liked, uh, I loved De Niro, I liked early Pacino, I liked, uh, of course, Brando, I liked Meryl Streep, I liked the old-timey ones, too. Yeah. The, the yeah. I like John Garfield, except he didn't last too long, but all right, get him in the eyes, get him right in the eyes. Uh, James Dean, of course, uh, but he didn't last too long either, thanks to Donald Turnip, see you bastard. Yeah. He should have signaled. Uh, who else? Uh, lot, lots of the old timey ones. I like Sebastian Cabot too. I don't know why, but I just love Sebastian Cabot. Uh, you know, who one of my favorite actors is because he's always good in everything he does, even if the thing he's doing sucks. Uh huh. John Goodman. Oh, John Goodman's amazing, man. He's an excellent actor. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, but he's doing a lot of good. Even if it's like a quick supporting role, you remember him, you know. Yeah, exactly. He's great. He he just yeah. he he manages to. You hire him. He comes in. He does the job. You know. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Whether it's a lead or a side guy or whatever, and he's very likable. Yeah. Yeah. Got the LQ, the likability quotient. Yeah. You gotta have the LQ. If you don't have the LQ, you're dead meat, baby. Do you know what role he's kind of best known for among people, though? Was uh, what was well, that? What was that thing with uh, with the Jeff Bridges? Um, uh, the um, ah. Uh, big Lebowitz. Uh, Lebowitz. Uh, no, what's? Oh God, my brain is fucked today. It's over. You blanked out. It's over. You're finished. You're through. The big Lebowski. Young guy who looks like Alex. Okay, okay. The big Lebowski. What I'm going? The, the big, big Lebowski. Oh, of course, he was great in that. What was course. I thinking? The big Lebowitz. What? What, what was with Lebowitz. me? <laughs> see, see how old I'm. I, okay. I saw that movie with John Goodman. It was called The Big uh, Lebowitz. And uh, yeah, oh man, I'm telling you, I got, I need more coffee. Fuck. Hey, the big Lebowitz. Yeah. Do you have Do you have those kind of moments lately? All the time. Like kidding? I find them fun. It's like a little vacation for the brain. <laughs> you go somewhere, and then you come back. <laughs> yeah. Like being on the beach for like four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody out there, you can make a big deal about Alex said the big Lebowitz today. The big Lebowitz. The big Lebowitz. Sorry, no, but, but 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 uh, um, uh, Goodman always said that he gets recognized more for the Big Lebowski than oh, anything sure, he's done. Sure. You know, he lost a lot of the weight. I don't know if he gets recognized that much now, but the, he didn't he lose he, he didn't lose enough that he still doesn't look like John Goodman. Yeah, but, but well, he, he's older and he got skinnier, so yeah. Yeah, he doesn't look as happy. No. <laughs> Nobody on a diet is happy. You live longer, but nobody on a diet is happy. Yeah, yeah. So he was a big person. Because you know they like their hot butt Sundays, don't we all? Mm. Can't have no more. You can have a hot butt salad, but that's it. Now, tell me something. Yes. Uh, what is it about comedians that when they become big, they buy cars like crazy? Do they? Do you ever know Jerry Lewis bought like a thousand of them. Yeah. How about, how about Jay Leno? Oh well, he's he's always been a car nut. 
So uh, I, I always say even before he got famous, he probably owned a few cars. And, uh, you know, this comedian, what's his name, who, uh, who just uh, had the big accident. Uh, oh, uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah, Ke- yeah, 1970, whatever. Kevin Hart, yeah. Uh, some, some people like cars, you know, and I see I would see guys at the comedy store pull up in those huge Jeep gas guzzlers. The tires are taller than you and those things. Yeah, it's insane. It, it yeah, I, got a I got this big, big ass gas guzzler now that I don't need. It's insane, man. It almost seems like when they really make it, st- start to make it, they go buy the cars. Yeah, they and, buy a Sherman tank when they get even bigger. Same <laughs> thing's true of rappers. Rappers buy cars like crazy. I would love to have oh, a... rappers like, man, I got 17 cars out there right now, man. I'm in the chartreuse one. I'd love man, to have a car one. dealership in Compton, for Christ's sake. Oh, you know? sure. If you don't get killed, you make make be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> we will make you... Uh, Scientists, come on, big sale. Don't shoot us. Big sale. Don't shoot us. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, um, comedians either, I've said this before, comedians either die young or they they live to be an old person, really old. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of getting old right now, so <laughs> if I die today, I would count as an older guy. I think the, shit, I think the really days. old part about it is is that, really, you can keep doing comedy. You know, there's always a, yeah. cru- there's always a cruise ship somewhere or an old oh, folks sure, home in Florida. So like you, grab, you know, put you on stage, like grabbing each arm and putting you on a stool and prop a mic in front of you. Yeah. It can work. Yeah. Or you die young because you're living so damn hard. Exactly. Yeah. Like that is, if I made it way back when, I would probably be dead now because I used to indulge in different things. But now... If I if I made it now, I wouldn't even want to make it now. So, well, <laughs> that's when, when you know you're getting old, you don't want to make it anymore. You know what's kind of strange though is when Kinnison died. Um, everybody said I knew he'd die of drugs, but not in somebody else. Exactly. Yeah, they, they, they he, think it would be like somebody else's he hand. Got so, hit by. Would be a drug overdose, or he drive into a tree or something. He got killed by a drunk driver. He got killed by a drunk driver. Yep. Yeah. You know, his name was Troy Pearson. That was the name of the drunk driver. Oh, Troy? really? Pearson, remember that. What, hap- what happened? Pearson. What happened to? Him? You know, well, to the guy. Did they ever find him guilty of something? Or oh, yeah, yeah, they took his license away for a year, and he had to do community service. It was like the state was rewarding him for killing Sam. Actually, <laughs> 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 <And I actually, laughs> once in Las Vegas at some collection agency or something. Troy Pearson, P I E R S O N. Remember, the name that. is Troy Pearson. Remember. Anyone who wants to get back at him, this is for information purposes only. Troy. Pearson. Uh, yes, remember him always, Troy Pearson. Uh, Troy yeah. Pearson, uh, and remember uh, Donald Turnipseed too. But you can't get him back because he's dead. Donald Turnipseed. He's the guy who turned right in front of James Dean. <laughs> oh, re- I th- I thought James Dean just kind of veered off the road or something. Nope, nope. Somebody. Uh, it was it was weird because there's a guy coming towards him who was going to take this fork off the road, but the exit, for some reason, it was not, not divided. It was like you go this way and then you go that way. And the, 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 when you go in a direction, it said to take the exit. The guy had to go left across Dean's Lane. I don't know why it was like that. It's very unsafe, but he did that, and he swore he didn't see Dean's car. Well, he, was, he, was, he was going up to, where was he going? Um, he was going to the races in Salinas. The, the races in Salinas, LA. and he told Jack that just as he was leaving. He said, I'm going to the races they were, they in were, Salinas. They were towing the Porsche in a station wagon, and they, they decided to drive the Porsche, and he'd be behind the station wagon. Yeah, and he station, said... Then, but he passed yeah. the station wagon, he's going fast. And then uh, along came old Donald Turnip, and he said, I think I'm like a lift here, huh? That was the end of that. His name wasn't Donald Turnipseed, was it? Yes, it was. It was Donald Turnipseed. Oh, jeez. If you're going to be killed by somebody, not Donald Turnipseed. <laughs> Nerdy McNerdson. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, some when, idiot when, who just like needs a careless mistake. He bites when Jack, or when, or something. I didn't when, see the car coming. When Jack saw him in the uh, Porsche and he said, so where are you going? He says, I'm going up to wherever uh, he was going. For the, he says, you're going to take, taking the car to the races up there. And Jack yeah. said, do not race in that thing. Be very careful in that car. And he said, I will. Oh, yeah. He said, I'm not going to race or anything like that. I'm just driving up there. Yeah. And uh, he left. And uh, next wow. thing you know, uh, Jack is in a, in, a, in a screening room with Elizabeth Taylor watching uh, outtakes, you know, takes from uh, Giant, clips from yeah. Giant. And the door opens, and a guy walks in and whispers something to Elizabeth Taylor, and she goes, oh, my God, no. And that's when they found out that James Dean had been killed. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, 
I, six weeks later, I was born. I guess he finished most of his work on that film. I don't think they had uh-huh. to, they had to cut him cut around him. Uh, yeah. Well, but uh, if you see Giant at the end when he's making that speech to an empty room when he's really drunk mm-hmm. in that big ballroom, that's not his voice. I think it's Dennis Hopper's voice. Oh, is it I really? think he, he had, they, they didn't like the way it came out, and they couldn't redub it with him because he was dead. So they got Dennis Hopper or somebody else. Like, yeah. You remember that scene yeah. near the end? Anyway, hey, look, we've run out of time. Oh, my God. See, talking about James Dean, the time just flies by like he did. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous. If you're in Vegas, go see him. If you know where he's playing. Thank you very much, Mr. Steven, fabulous. That's what they call. <laughs> Stephen Pearl. Bye, Stephen. Bye, Alex. Talk to you later. Five years and still talking. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. That's uh, Stephen Pearl. We love talking with Stephen. And uh, we love talking with you, too. That's why I'm going to open up the Skype lines here. Uh, oh, yes, let's open up the Skype lines. Let me see here. Where, where, which one is Skype now? Oh, they're okay. I'm still, I'm still learning this. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess got some uh, a note. I couldn't, I couldn't call him back or send him back anymore. Uh, but I got a thing from uh, Ray Renati about some message I sent him, some audio file I sent him, and I never sent him an audio file. Uh, that's uh, usually somebody spoofing you on uh, on uh, Facebook. And uh, if you open it up, maybe it'll ruin your call. <laughs> you know, ruin your, your uh, computer. I don't know. Anyway. I don't open up uh, most uh, things that people send me anymore because I don't know in most cases uh, that they are not going to corrupt my computer. And God knows I have enough problems here already without having my computer get corrupted. Okay? I was just on the phone. Oh, man. Uh, Give me a call. Uh, I was just on the phone with um, Amazon. You know, they have gotten worse and worse and worse. Uh, to begin with, nobody there speaks English anymore. Uh, you know, it used to be you got some pretty knowledgeable, helpful people, and the whole idea was being helpful, and now they don't seem to give a shit. So what I did is about a year ago, I bought this RAID, this, uh, you know, and I needed uh, hard drives for it. Well, hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me uh, open up uh, the, uh, the line here. Uh, hello there. You there? Uh, yeah. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. There's um, our good friend, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Alex. Wait a minute. Why are you so low? Why are you so low? Oh, I see. I don't have you open. Okay. Hello. Are you there now? I'm here. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting how to do this whole thing. It's getting terrible. Anyway, I was just saying that three about a year ago, I bought a RAID, which you, you have like four hard drives that you put in there and the whole thing works with each other and you're never going to lose anything because if one of them goes down you just put in a new raid right well over the year i i bought four (laughs) discs four enterprise discs which what you're supposed to do and uh, they're four terabytes each and um in a year three of them have gone bad wow yeah yeah so I finally I ordered another one as a standby because I had a standby here. And I ordered another one. And uh, I called up uh, Amazon to say, it, I notice it says there's a uh, three-year warranty on these things. So uh, she said, yeah, this is some woman in the Philippines because I asked her where she was and, and really not in complete command of the English language, Okay. And I, uh, I, I tell her the, the problem, and she says, you're going to have to call uh, uh, Seagate and get them to take care of the... Which didn't seem right to me, because usually if you have a warranty problem, say they just take care of it at, at uh, Amazon. I may call them back again tomorrow and see what they can do about it, because this woman wasn't helpful at all. Uh, in fact, now what I usually do, although I didn't have the time, is I tell the person who answers the phone at, uh, app, at, at Amazon, uh, let me talk to a phone in the United States. And then they, hold on a moment, please, and then they put you onto an American. 
Anyway, so uh, I'm I'm doing this whole thing right, and um, my microphone was low too. Uh, I I'm I'm doing this whole thing, and 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 she says, well, wait a minute, let me get you the Skype phone number. And I said, okay, what's the Skype phone, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, Seagate, rather, phone number? I said, yeah. what's the Seagate phone number? She says, uh, it's uh, 1-8-0-1-8-0-0-4. And I said, there's no 1-800-0-0-4. <laughs> and, and she says, but that's what it says here. And then she gives me the rest of the number. And later on, she sends me a note from from her readout, and it did say one zero zero one eight hundred zero zero four dash blah 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 blah. Right? Uh, I mean, but this is the kind of service you get now from Amazon. Mm -hmm. It used to be they were terrific. Yeah, you know? they were wonderful, and I've had to deal with them on several occasions in the last week, and it's been horrendous, just mm -hmm. horrendous. So. I'm going to call Seagate tomorrow. I may call Amazon back and ask them tomorrow and say, look, you know, what do we do about this? Because uh, I don't think little Miss Philippines of 1947 is going to be able to give me the correct answer, you know? Um, uh, so um, anyway, um, that's my problem. So I had to order a new drive for $87, you know, which I don't like to do on my fixed income, but if I have to, I have to. But three drives in one year yeah you know uh i mean what does this raid system do eat up drives <laughs> you know or does it just get a faulty reading and say hey this thing is in danger of failing and it's just warning you that it's in danger of failing i don't know but anyway so i have a new one right now it's sitting there rebuilding itself <laughs> and what I, I what i love about the raid system i mean i gotta say this is that uh if any of the drives go, you just simply replace that drive with a blank drive, and everything still works, and it just rebuilds itself into the system. And so I put a lot of all my old shows here on them and all my stuff that I need to save and that I want to use because I know that if at some point, like this drive went, no problem, just pop in a new drive. So, you know, but I don't want to have to pop in three new drives every year. Yeah. You know, it seems that a bit seems well, maybe I should just buy more expensive drives, but that doesn't guarantee anything either, you know? So, I don't know. So, uh, but I've been buying, I, instead of Seagates, I've been buying HP drives, uh, which I imagine are Seagate drives with the HP name on them. So, that's, mm -hmm. my, that's my tale of woe, and I, that's what I was dealing with tonight before I went on the air. Uh, just happened to notice that my system went down on Mm. Or that the one drive was going bad. There was some notification that said, one of your drives is going bad, number three. So then I replaced it, and everything's rebuilding now. But I had to spend another 89, 87 bucks to make sure I have another drive in the house in case another of the original drives fails. So far, I've got one drive in there that it's a Barracuda. It's not even supposed to really work, and that thing never goes down. You know, so I, I don't get it. Anyway. How you doing, Charlie? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It's just you and the me. Finally cooled off. What? The weather's finally cooled off a little bit. It's only like 95 for the high today. Really? Right now in New York, it is 64 degrees. Yeah. So says my watch. You know, which is kind of nice. You know, I'm 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 happy with it. Uh, with the weather. Uh, it, it's been terrible. But I do have the air conditioning on in here because for some reason there's some humidity out there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't care if you're 64 degrees or you're 80 degrees. If you got humidity, that's yep. just horrible to deal with. Let's see. Oh, here comes Bree. God, Bree doesn't usually oh, call in this early because it's, uh, it's too early <laughs> Bree time. Uh, yeah. to, to deal with us. But uh, let's see if he's there. Let me see if I... Uh, there we go. There's Bree. Okay, we got to put him He's up. There Skype. we go. There we go. How are you, Bree? You calling? Good. The... How are you? Yeah. What time? Guys what time is it in Kuala Lumpur? Ten thirty-nine a.m. Ten thirty-nine a.m. Okay, so it's a reasonable hour for you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. The, I tell you, this job, I have so much. I'm so much busier. I, I'm. 
I'm oh. sure that I won't go another five or ten minutes without somebody knocking on my door. So. It is the same time in uh, in Kuala Lumpur as it is in China. Because, nice. because I suddenly realized a 12-hour difference in China. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, although China has, what, something like four different, what could be four different time zones, but what they did is they made the entire country the same time zone. Hmm. So... You know, but you you must be aligned there with uh, with China, right? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah, so it's a twelve hour difference. So it's it's morning over there. You're living in the future. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Friday morning. It's already Friday the thirteenth. Yes. Yeah. So how and, si how uh, civilized is it in Kuala Lumpur? I mean, you get all the latest movies and all the latest TV and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we have right now we have the haze is back um, and this is this actually was a problem uh, seven years ago when I lived in Singapore I remembered it I thought maybe they had gotten it under control but no no it's uh, it's primarily the slash and burn uh, tactics of the Indonesian farmers and uh, what do you mean so slash we, and, what do you mean slash and burn the earth really what, yeah, uh, to clear their lands. Oh, they just set it on fire. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's actually unhealthy to go out. Uh, some schools are off, and they there are warning announcements, you know, posted throughout the media not to go outside. Have you gone uh, unless you're wearing? Have a you mask. gone to Have you gone to Beijing recently? Ah, boy, I'll be there in uh, the spring. Yeah, they got a problem. They got a real yeah. problem, and they can't seem to get rid of it either. You know, and it's not their filthy country or anything, but, you know, they just, uh, well, it's like, like we were. It took us a long time to get rid of all, yeah. our, all our pollution. I remember here in yeah. New York City, it was terrible. It used mm. to be horrible here in New York City. And, I lived uh, in Pittsburgh. Huh? Yeah. I lived in Pittsburgh. And it was terrible. In yeah. New, it was terrible in New York City. And uh, uh, I... Uh, uh, I remember that I would, for instance, go out and look at my windowsill, and there was this literally black soot on the yeah. windowsill. You know, and I was breathing, yeah. breathing that shit in every day. But now you don't see that anymore. We cleaned up the city. You know, we yeah. cleaned up the pollution in the city. Well, thanks to the EPA. Yeah, thanks now to that Trump wants to yeah. kill. Yep, 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 yep. Um, anyway, we need more callers, folks. Hi, we're, we're, we're doing our little show here in case you, in case you can't see us, you know. Um, are the debates over? The debates are, I have about another 20, uh, not 18 minutes. I, I, watch, probably, I don't watch them anymore. I, I tuned in for a little bit, but no thanks. Yeah. What, well, what, what, uh, is, is, what was the, um. What part of did you see see the beginning of the debate? No, but I did read about Andrew Yang's proposal, uh, and that, that's what reminded me that there was a debate. So I tuned in for a little bit, and it was just more of the same. Kamala Harris, you know, being uh, evoking her emotional status on everything under the sun, which yeah, she's. I just am tired of that. Well, I'll tell you who I noticed was doing okay to begin with. Uh, 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 Elizabeth Warren was doing fine, you know. Um, she was, uh, I think she, uh, I'm begin I've really warmed up to her, okay. Um, what is that? What is that? Oh, the You're flag, uh, putting the uh, 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 Malaysian flag there. Boy, everybody imitates our flag, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's see, how many stripes is that? One, two, three. Oh, I don't know if that's like the accurate one. That's just the one I got. So. Oh, okay. it looks like twelve. Twelve? No, thirteen. I think 13. there are twelve states, maybe. Yeah. 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 But it is funny uh, yeah. when it's when it's waving. It if you don't see the, if you don't see this part. You mm -hmm. see this part. You do think, looks like the U.S. Wow. flag. Yeah. Is is it an Islamic country? Um. Yeah, predominantly. Because the crescent star, the crescent there, seems to indicate uh, Islam. Okay, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what's funny is, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, um, 
I lived in Dubai, so you know that was in theory that's the area where Islam was founded, right? Uh, but here in Malaysia, they don't they don't do things like they do there. At least not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's always funny to for me to see how these uh, how the practices sort of change from you know country to country. What do you mean Islam? It was also yeah. What do you mean Islam was founded in Dubai? It was found. No, you know, I mean, in, I mean in Mecca is the Arabian in, Peninsula. Oh, okay, because Mecca is in Saudi Arabia, and yeah. that's essentially where uh, Islam was created uh, by uh, Muhammad, blessed be he. Uh, I always like to yeah. say that for my Islam friends out there. Uh, peace and be upon him. Peace be upon him. Uh, and he started writing his surahs uh, for the Quran in Mecca, and then he was thrown out of Mecca because he believed in the one God, and Mecca m was making a fortune off of selling idols. Mm -hmm. So he was chased out of town, and he moved up to Medina. So the first half of the Quran are called the, the uh, Meccan prophecies, and the second half are the Medinan prophecies. And uh, there he became a big leader, became a big deal, and that's where the Quran flourished but basically uh, uh, Mecca is where Islam started you know so. but he, uh, by the way um, if anybody asks you um, uh, he didn't write the surahs they were dictated to him by the angel Gabriel I believe yeah uh, so, so. Okay. oh what the Ga angel Gabriel isn't that a western uh, angel no, yeah. you, you know it what happened was is that the, the two religions have a lot to do with each other. They're, 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 you know, all, all Islam is is, is um, Judaism point one point two. You know, it's it's like a reestablishment, but in a different form. So they, it's the same with uh, the Mormons, right? It's like that's Christianity, and then you know, with an with an amendment. One point two, yeah. Well, the thing yeah. is, the thing is that. Um, uh, the, the, the Jews and the Islamics have so much in common, it's amazing they don't get oh, along. Yeah. Uh, they both, you know, Jews are kosher. Uh, Islamics are halal. Same exact mm -hmm. thing. No pork, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. don't do this, don't eat that, don't do this. Yeah. You know, um, uh, we be both believe in the one God. And that's what differed us from Buddhism and a lot of other religions because uh, we were uh, monotheistic. So the, 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 the Isla Islamics and the Jews have everything in common. That's why they got along for, for centuries. Mm -hmm. You know, It wasn't until recently in the 20th century when you had uh, uh, Balfour go into Israel and start making trouble and writing the Balfour Declaration that all of a sudden they started fighting each other and hating each other. Uh, but up until then, well, everything in common. Yeah. yeah, one of the things here, well, I can just tell you some of the things that are different. Um, it, one is, uh, first of all, I'm at work today. Uh, mm -hmm. Today is Friday. In Dubai, I would not be at work. Friday is off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Friday is the holy day in, in, for Islam in Dubai. Now, I'm, I'm led, someone told me there are two states in Malaysia where they follow the same as Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, there are two states here that are also off on Friday and I guess go back to work on Sunday. Uh, the other thing that's different well, is... Well, the Jewish Shab uh, Shabbos is from Friday through Saturday, Friday night to Saturday night. So, same, yeah. same as Islam. Go ahead. Same thing. Anyway, as you were and, saying. And um, I'm also, I get woken up here by the call to prayers, which they do here for what they call the Fajr, the, the first um, call to prayer of the day. Now that uh, happens here at 5.50 a.m. So depending on if I'm using my air conditioner at a certain level and the fan is high enough, I don't hear it. But uh, sometimes I do hear it. Mm -hmm. But in Dubai, they do that with the sun. But when the sun comes up, there's another call to prayers. That's when they start it. Because I think there are six per day, but you only have to do five. So if I had my preference, I would prefer the local mosque not do the call to prayers at 5.50 because the sun doesn't rise here until after 7 a.m. 
So I don't know why they insist on doing that when back in the mm -hmm. homeland there of, of Islam, they don't do that. So, you know, or at least in Dubai, maybe in Mecca or Medina they do. But uh, I also saw this in Singapore where they, will, they would have some type of an event that would be, and I would ask them, hey, you know, what is this event? And they'd say, oh, this is because we're, you know, from China. And I'd ask my wife, who's from China, do you recognize this? She'd say, no, no, we don't do that where I'm from. So, you know, a lot of times uh, in, when you take something from an original place mm -hmm. and then it's transplanted to another, they come up with their own, you know, version of it. And then, it, you know, their own story, I guess you could say. And then it becomes an issue of, well, which one is accurate or correct or right? Or, and I guess you don't have to ask that question. You could just say they're different. Yeah. Right. So you know. where, where are you calling us from? Are you at work? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I wonder, it, it looks like your office is sparse, however. Like you haven't uh, got just, just what you're seeing. I'm I, I have a holder for my iPad, mm -hmm. and it's in a certain location. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, but I actually have quite a lot here. Do you have an office uh, all to yourself? Yes. Oh, how nice! I, because it looked like in the other place there were other people who use the office as no. well. No. No, I had my own place there too. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 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 But you are much earlier in the morning in Dubai. Are you talking about it though? Oh no, hours. yeah, the yeah. hours were different. It would be about four hours. it would be maybe about uh, f four hours earlier. Yeah, yeah. So now it's a little more convenient for him, except that now he's having to call from work. Yeah, and my work is much busier here. I have a lot more responsibilities and a lot more activities. Although I originally was supposed to be here for two years. Mm -hmm. But now uh, the Malaysian government only gave me a visa for one year. So now the school has written, uh, revised my contract to align with the government visa. Now what happens, so at, the end, what happens at the end of that year? <clears throat> I have to go or I get renewed. <laughs> yeah. Now can, they, can the school appeal and say, hey, we want, them, we want him to stay and he's important to us? And then they go, okay. I think they could, but I think that would be quite unprecedented. Um, I'm told that they 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 have in their history they haven't denied, uh, you know, what the school wants. So, but I I wonder why then they just didn't say okay, you know, 24 months. Uh, but you know, yeah, that's there's all kinds of quirks and idiosyncrasies, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, that's amazing. Oh, hey, we've been joined by Jeff. Uh, hold yeah. on a second. Let me uh, put Jeff up here and get him a little slot in our show. Ah, oh, there we go. Ba -ba -bum, ba -boom -boom. No, that's not what I want. Push the wrong one. I got to start wearing my glasses more often. Let me see here. Come on. There we go. There's uh, there's uh, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Good evening. Yeah, say hello to Dubai. Hello there. <laughs> Kuala Lumpur. Excuse me, Kuala Lumpur. I'm I'm so right. I'm so punchy lately. I can't think straight. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I can't remember things I've got to remember, and I just you know, I'm I, I don't know what it is. I think I'm I'm my brain's finally going. You know. <clears throat> well, they do call the, they call their flag Old Glory here as, as well. It's called Mighty Stripes of Glory. Mighty Stripes so of Glory. It, you could that, call it Old Glory. <laughs> that sounds like the name of some kind of gospel group. The Mighty Stripes of Glory. You know. <laughs> Did you see any of the debate, uh, uh, Jeff? Yeah, that's what I was watching. But yeah, and? Uh, I don't know. Uh, some of them are very good and some of them are not as good. They're like, who did you think came across well? Uh, the fellow from New Jersey... Uh, Cory Booker. Yeah. 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 He was yeah. coming across very well when I was watching it. Yeah. I thought he does. He, he's a good communicator. Yeah. And he has a lot, he has a lot, what I call personal stuff that he did. Yeah. As compared to a lot of people tell you what their job used to be at. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, well, what's blah. What was with this Andrew Yang? Uh, he's become the Oprah of of of, uh, of candidates. 
because it's kind of like you get a thousand dollars and you get a thousand dollars. Was he giving? Was he tonight giving away a thousand dollars to like eight people or something for ten? What was that deal all about? Well, and that, he could run into some legal issues with that. Yeah, it's like trying uh, to buy your vote. Yeah, <laughs> he, and he's uh, he's taking out of campaign funds. He, now, previously, he did give money out of his own pocket to three families, but now he is saying ten families, and from the cam from his campaign funds. So, uh, the the stipulation though is, those funds are not allowed to be used for personal use. Uh, clearly, the families would be using it for personal use, but uh, the Yangs, uh, uh, his office's interpretation is that it can't be used for the personal use of the candidate. So, what he does with it. You know, by giving it to these families, they say will not be. So it remains to be seen. Yeah, but and but, he says that these, yeah, the yeah. payouts will occur even if he doesn't win the nomination. But doesn't this constitute, on some level, buying trying to buy somebody's vote? I I, I think so. And I, I I there's something about him giving that money away that I feel uncomfortable with. Uh, it's mm. it's almost kind of like throwing his money in your face. Hmm. Yeah, but I'll take it. Oh, uh, <laughs> he wants to send me a thousand bucks tomorrow. I'll be happy to take it. A thousand a month, month, Andrew. You've got my vote, okay? You know. Yeah. In fact, let me, me just too. say this to all the candidates: whoever can come up with the best price will get my vote. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm for sale because, quite frankly, I don't think my vote is worth shit in this country. Uh, because no matter who I vote for, the country still goes downhill. I don't know what it is, yeah. you know. So if you want if you want to buy my vote, it's it's for sale. I'm more than happy to you know let you <laughs> buy it. Uh, a thousand's a good starting price, Andrew. If you got something better, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's see what he's going to do with taxes. You know. What did you think of Elizabeth Warren, Jeff? Well, I still think a lot of, of her. I think she's very good. Well, whenever, you know, no matter what you think of Elizabeth Warren going into any of these things, once you hear her talk, uh, you kind of like get a real nice impression of her, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, you have this, uh, this great feeling of um, uh, uh, that she knows what she's talking about, that she's thought her ideas out completely, that she knows the subject matter, you know? Um, she said she's smart just by by the sense of uh, the way she communicates things. Mm -hmm. They're very clear as to what she wants to say, and um, and then also at the end uh, they were asking a little bit about personal stuff, and she tells you about her life and some of the dumb things that she did. And, and some of the things that worked out well and didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And she's a smart lady, and she's and she's very willing to communicate and, and to say what happened. Yeah, you know. And a lot of people, I don't know, Biden is an example. He has an answer, but it's it almost doesn't sound personal. Even though I, I know all the people got killed and died for him and all of that. Well, he, it's, he, he, he seems to be, well, yeah, uh, he seems to be the epitome of the saying that you can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all the people all of the time. But if you can do it just once every four years, you can become president. Yeah. You know, uh, he just, uh, is something not genuine about Joe Biden. You know, yeah, I know all your family has died or gotten cancer or done one thing or another, and we're all going to feel sorry for you, but I just don't know if that's a reason to vote for somebody. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, what I get tired of is the pie-in-the-sky thinking. Like every time I tune into the debates, there's always somebody. Well, well teachers are so important. We got to pay our teachers more, and everybody claps. You know, it's like, well, you you can't. You're not going to affect that change. What do you? How on earth are you going to affect change like that? That that happens on a different level, first of all, and second of all, you're not going to have anything to do with it. Well, so they all talk about when I become president, I will do thus and thus, and I will do thus and thus. And then you realize that most of the things they're promising are going to be impossible for them to accomplish. 
Yes. Oh, uh, you know, exactly. uh, pie in the sky. Yeah, yeah, it's pie in the sky. And it, it's just always when people are running for president, there are always promises. And it's very easy to make promises. Mm -hmm. uh, all you're trying to do is get the job. Once you got the job, you don't have to keep the promises. I mean, you got to admit that as much as you hate Donald Trump for his base, he's pretty well tried to keep up with his promises, although his promises were all over the place. You know. Well, and he, he can interpret it, things however he sees fit. So, you know, when it comes time to did, did he build the wall, he'll have a, you know, a slick uh, one minute video that shows him, you know, with his hard hat on directing the construction and showing, you know, lots of wall, regardless yeah. of if it's real or not. And he just puts that out. And that's the reality. He creates his own realities. Yeah. And then the media you know, follow it. And but if they why, don't, he calls them fake news. Why is it every four years we listen to these candidates and then we sit around like you're, we're sitting around now and we discuss which candidate's the best and we say, well, so-and-so says he's going to do this and so-and-so says he's going to do that and you argue back and forth about who you're going to vote for and eventually the election happens and one of these guys becomes president and then you say, well, he said he was going to do that stuff but he hasn't done it. And then the answer always comes back, well, he was running for president when he said that stuff. Well, if you know that, why are you being suckered into voting for the guy in the first place? You know? Makes, That's the kind of thinking that makes only 34% people, 34 of the people turn out to vote, like in North Carolina. Well, you know, I mean, I don't blame people for not voting because they have no evidence that their vote has ever done anything good for them. You know, I mean, I find it frustrating to vote because I find that in New York, no matter who I vote for, uh, the Democrats going to win. OK, and well, let's get that thousand bucks. And, and no, but here's what happens when it's a presidential race. My vote is distilled down to a small number of electoral votes. In other yeah, words, that's got to change. What did they used to do with mortgages where they would bundle them? And so on, and and so here's how much they were worth because uh, we have them all. Bu they, they bundle your vote into like what 84 votes or something like that here in New York, and I'm going, then my vote doesn't mean shit to a tree, you know, uh, and, and how how are the independents ever going to win, you know, and or have a shot, and the independents should have a good shot. In this society, in every other country in the world, it isn't a two-party system, you know. Sometimes, how many how many parties did you? Well, you probably didn't have any parties in Dubai, did you? No. Oh, that's no. no. That's laughable. No. Yeah. Oh, I had people had parties, but not of the political kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, it's now they a, do have they do have. Uh, multiple parties in mm -hmm. Malaysia and in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, for all practical purposes, Singapore is one party rule. Uh, if you vote for the other guys, you won't get your lifts refurbished. Your elevators won't get uh, fixed. Uh, that's what it amounts to. Yeah. And if, you know. But I mean, it, it's just that we, it, it just seems very frustrating to vote here because I don't feel like, you know, okay, so if I don't vote in the next election, is that going to mean Trump's going to get elected because I didn't vote? Because I know New York's going to go for whoever the Democrat is. Connecticut, pretty much the same thing, right, Jeff? Maybe, pretty much. You know, maybe yours is a little more up in the air than, than New York is, but New York no, is... No, it's the same. New York is, is you know, uh, prototypical um, uh, liberal. You know, and... Gosh, here in Malaysia, there's... There's too many parties. I can't even list them or you keep up with them. There's so many. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. My gosh. So some guy can win by two votes? I, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't fully know it yet. Uh, I have to be here a little while. Um, Do you get to vote? But, Do you get to vote? No, I don't get to vote. I don't get to vote. Did you get to vote at all in, um, in uh, Dubai? No. Did they have votes in Dubai? But I didn't. I wasn't taxed in Dubai. I'm taxed here, so my, you know, so the funny thing is here, it's you know, taxation without representation. Yeah. yeah. Now let me ask you this: Can you still vote in the United States by? 
I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you're still a citizen of the United States. You've never taken on. Right. But how, when's That's the last right. time you actually physically lived in, New York, in, in the United States for any amount of time? Uh, 2006, I was there for half a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So 2005, I was there. Yeah. Why do you choose not to work in the United States? I mean, I, I don't blame you, but I want to know your <laughs> reason. Um, that's a good question. I, I think, I mean, there are a lot of different answers depending on the day. I, I guess um, I, I just, I go where the job is. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I kind of got bored of the U.S. I got, I got tired of our food and of having to drive a car everywhere and uh just overall everything you know yeah uh, i just got tired of it and it's so much more ex exciting to live abroad yeah uh, there's so much more of the world out there that i just i don't like people who are parochial in their thinking and they only think of yeah. one country in one place yeah um well, you, you know, also, you also, you know, you're, you have the, you see, you're very lucky because how old are you now? Um, <laughs> Alex, you're always trying to get that out of me. You're, you're, and I never tell I, you. I'd say you're in your <laughs> early 40s. Am I, would I be correct in that assumption? Let's go with that. But I'm older than that. <laughs> what a great answer. <laughs> All right. You're, like Jack you're, Benny, he's 39. I think you're 67. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? It's yeah. not the years in your life that count so yeah. much as the life in your years. As somebody as somebody is about to turn 80, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff will tell you that's bullshit. Yep. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about stopping doing this because I'm having a hard time holding conversations now and remembering <laughs> what I'm talking about, you know. Me too, uh, Alex. Uh, I mean, part of it could be extreme depression. I have no idea, but, you know. Uh, well, I mean, you were asking me why I don't come back to the States, and I was just saying, you know, generally I just enjoy variety and seeing the rest of the world. Well, what I was going to say is if I were younger, I would probably do exactly what you're doing. Uh, you know, it's a little hard at my age to suddenly pick up stakes and move to a foreign country which was something I would do in a second when I was in my 30s. You know, I wouldn't think well, twice about What about for about a month it. or two? I would have done it for a month, a month or two now. Yeah. yeah well, it, the only problem with that is you're essentially living out of a suitcase, and I hate that, you know? Yeah, I I go away so. for three weeks on vacation. I'm glad to get home because I'm so tired of, you know, that, that living out of the suitcase. Yeah. So, uh, unless you find like a house in the country to live in. Oh, I forgot to see. Yeah, see, I forget. I always forget something I got to do here. Where is it? I can't even find the switch. I need to turn on the light back there, the on the air light. Oh, there it is. See? I knew something was different. Here's the little thing. And if I just go click, there it goes. There you go. The, uh, so, Alex, the party that won the most votes. And the most seats in the last election is called the Alliance of Hope, and it's made up of four, four or five, uh, four, four parties, and they call themselves the Alliance of Hope. Oh, that's nice. Is it a very, is it a really democratic country, or is it uh, does it have like you, a a despot as a ruler? You know, it it's actually quite democratic, um, in my estimation. Uh, more so than a lot of other places, you know. More so than uh, Dubai. Certainly more so Singapore. More, more so than Dubai, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because Dubai is run by a king or mm -hmm. prince or whatever you had there. A sheikh. A sheikh. Uh, yeah, but you can call him king too, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, it, so, and when you have a sheikh, he's just he's just the poobah. He runs everything, right? He, what he says goes. <clears throat> yeah, he's the grand poobah. <laughs> but now this guy is the guy, though, that rebuilt Dubai and started building things like the Burj Khalifa and yeah. those islands that are homes and so on and so forth. You know. Yeah, he's definitely a visionary. I, I thought he was cool. Um, he's got some bad press recently for his wife, uh, one, one of his wives divorcing him. She was uh, she was a princess from Jordan, 
And I think, so they have some court case in, in Britain hmm. uh, for the divorce hmm. about that. Yes. There's something about one of his daughters I know. We talked about that on this program. Uh, yeah. But look, you know. Yeah, your, wa- your, wife, your, your wife is divorcing you, Sheikh. Uh, which one? Uh, <laughs> Khalifa. Do I know her? <laughs> How many wives does he have? I, I don't think that that is publicly known for sure perfectly, oh, but oh, well, I think that oh, probably oh, around five. Oh, well, I'm saying, though, that if a, if a wife of his decides to divorce him, it's no big deal. He's still got spares. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I think she was the youngest most and sort of uh, most prominent and, you know, she kind of yeah. had her own thing going on, so I don't know. She had her own you know. thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, his, it's his personal, private business. I'm not really overly concerned with that. You know, I worked there. I didn't pay taxes. Everything worked. Uh, it was quite convenient, mm-hmm. clean. Everything yeah. functioned. Yeah. I don't have a problem with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so um, um, and then you, where else did you live? You lived in Singapore, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I lived in Singapore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've spent time in different countries. I hear, uh, I hear it's a very clean city, Singapore. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's true. Because Dubai if, is also very because clean. Because if you litter, you you get whipped. It's a fine city. It, it's <laughs> it's a fine city. <laughs> As in paying a fine. Yes. No, they're really very rigid about rules in Singapore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had that guy a couple of years ago, the kid who did something wrong. Remember, they gave him 10... Yeah, that was in the 1990s. Yeah. Michael Fay. Yeah, Michael Fay. You remember the name. Yeah. Of course. That was a big deal. When it comes to Singapore, I have, uh, you know, I'm a fount of... Were you you there at the time? No. No, no. No. I didn't come until a decade later. But certainly the vestiges of that case, anything that happens externally to Singapore, if it involves a Singaporean, yeah. all Singaporeans know about it. Yeah. Well, the thing is that with Faye, uh, nobody in the United States, that the United States government protested. But they said, no, you know, we're still going to do it. He was bad, and this yeah. is the way we rule, and if we don't do it, uh, we're sending a bad message to everybody else. You know. Correct. But, I mean, when they say 10 lashes or whatever, it's brutal. Yeah. It's just brutal. Uh, it's yeah. not like some to, people get out of it if you know if they have a medical excuse or depending on their age or depending on if it's a woman like, you know this kind of thing yeah yeah but i mean it uh you know you know what i found one of the most unusual things i've ever found is in china they have the death penalty for any number of things that you do they have a tv show it's once a week in which people who are being sentenced to death come on the air and plead for them for their lives. Oh, I didn't know that. It's the and it is the biggest, highest rated show in China. Gosh, that is very black mirror episode ish. Yes, isn't it though? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like out of some kind of Orwellian universe. So nobody else is going to call tonight? Is that it? Is that what it's come to? You know? Is the debate well, over? Huh? The debate's over. Yeah, it's been over for 13 minutes. <laughs> okay, well, people are still... Phil's not here. Come on, guys. It's a Phil Free yeah, Friday. Phil's not here. I mean, it's Phil... Ah, that's right. So I, for, I forgot i got to put on my Phil hat. <laughs> uh, where, <laughs> I have a Phil hat? Yeah. I thought I had a hat. Oh. Yeah. Here you go. Your Phil hat? What is it? What does it say? Anything? Pete. It says Phillies. Oh, it's a Phil Phillies hat. It's not a Phil Pirates. Hat. Huh? Pirates. 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 I need my red hat. You, that looks like a MAGA hat. You, oh, really? Yeah. I got this <laughs> one. This is uh, U.S. Open. Where? Yeah. The latest one. Uh, one of those golf uh, tournaments did come through Dubai. One, one or two of them came through while I was there. It was right across the street from me. Yeah. Yeah, let me get my, I didn't get over there. Then, but, then, uh, then she got me this other hat. Okay. Uh, let me... Uh, well, wait a minute. I can still keep my earphones on and put on the other hat. But this one, I don't know. This makes me feel too old. 
Now, is it hot? That doesn't even look. It looks goofy. Gilligan. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's Gil- Gilligan. Gilligan. It's Gilligan like. I don't know. Can I? What? If you fold it up, you can be. Uh, what's does, the guy? Crocodile Dundee or something. Doesn't Woody Allen wear these kind of hats? And yeah, stuff? I think he does. Boy, I feel. It kind of looks. He's, goofy. he's in the news recently. He has a movie that somehow they're releasing it in Europe, but not in the U.S. And I saw him give an interview. He said, if it does well over here in Europe, maybe it'll get released in the States. My, that was well, my friend while. Bobby Slayton is in it. They're filming it in uh, Mallorca. Ah. And uh, he has European investors because his American... Uh, Amazon had a deal with him to make uh, oh, a I number of that. films. And yeah. then they backed out because of the whole Ronan Farrow bullshit, you know? Frank Sinatra Jr.? Frank Sinatra Jr., <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I got to take this off. I, it looks too goofy. <clears throat> I mean, that's another weird thing, isn't it? Well, like, our U.S., you know, our society is so <laughs> so <laughs> funny. I mean, we have things that are so blatantly obvious, and yet, I don't know, it, They ne- it, it's like it doesn't take. Like, you look at Donald Trump, and you look at his, how he marries, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you can see, like, that's a trophy wife situation. And Melania is totally just, you know, I mean, it's so obvious, and yet, but... You know, we can't say that. Everybody has to go around and say, oh, you know, she's first lady. There was something recently, something happened, and I saw the, there was a headline, like Melania Trump, uh, very, you know, curious uh, or, you know, laments that what X, Y, Z. And I'm thinking, is that, how is that a story? Like, <laughs> you know. By the way, uh, Forbin Colossus writes, with that hat, you're Woody or Bill Murray or even Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hunter S. Thompson. I don't know. That hat doesn't look right on me. Maybe I'm wearing it wrong or something like that. Uh, but what I'm thinking of going with are those golf caps. Yeah. I got a couple of those, and I don't know if I'm going to make that. I, my I think I think it's a shame though that a- anyway, oh, Amazon decided they didn't want to do business with Woody Allen anymore after Ronan Farrow wrote another one of those articles, which I wouldn't believe anything Ronan Farrow has to say about Woody Allen. Okay. Because I think that mother poisoned the whole family against him. Um, now, he's he's a son by who? Supposedly by Andre Previn, maybe? Or by Woody Allen? No. Hmm? I thought by Woody Allen. Really? Hold on a second. <clears throat> you thought so. Ronan Farrow. Let me see here. Ronan Farrow. Ronan Farrow. I don't think so. Orban, I, well, I'm not a fugitive. I pay my taxes. Let's see here. Ronan Farrow. Uh, let's see here. Uh, sibling. Parents. Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. It's his yeah, father. This kid is like doing this to his father. I didn't even take his father's name. No, he didn't take his father's name. Um, wow. That's shitty. Well, and he certainly, you know what I have to say about Ronan Farrow? He certainly looks like Woody. You know? How could that not be Woody's kid? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to see a DNA test on Ronan, okay? The guy's got yes, a lot. That would be a good pay-per-view. It, it, it should say, parents, Woody Allen, question mark, Mia Farrow. <laughs> you know, uh, because it... Uh, well, I, I mean, he could, he could be the non-biological. Oh, part. wait a minute. Is Roman adopted? Uh, in 1985, Farrow adopted... Dylan Farrow adopted at two weeks old. Oh, so the daughter wasn't even genetically Mia Farrow's daughter. Uh, Dylan was known as Eliza for some time and then known as Malone. And in 2013 interview with Variety Fair, Farrow stated that Ronan could possibly be the biological child of Frank Sinatra with whom she claimed she never really split up with. So she has even stated that Ronan might be Frank Sinatra's son. Well, if he isn't, it's amazing, because he looks more like Frank Sinatra's son than Frank Sinatra's son did. Yep. You know? But I just think, you know, Ronan Farrell, I think, is is an asshole, you know? Because he, he, he's just spent his whole life trying to make a, a business out of outing people. 
And I just, I just find that uh, somewhat disgusting. So nobody else going to call tonight, huh? Hmm. We're on our own. What? So we're on our own. We're, we're on our own. You guys want to talk to each other at all? <laughs> I, I, you know, I've just been so tired lately, I can't think straight, you know? Uh, yeah, well, tell me about it. I don't really have a bed yet. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, or don't like, get don't you know. get one. You don't know if you're going to be there more than twelve months. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, like the one I want yeah. is like, uh, let's see, uh, like uh, five hundred bucks. Well, know? these people who gave you the job, I mean, they gave you the job with the idea that you were coming for a while, right? I think so, but at the same time, they were kind of desperate because the the position had been open for a year, so. I think that, uh, well, not by the time I came. It's hard to explain, but yeah. Yeah, but they, uh, they should have told you that, well, we can only guarantee you a year because that's all we can give you for a visa, but maybe you'll get a second right. visa, you know. I didn't know it until two months before. I mean, I knew a year before I was coming that I was sort of coming. And then I definitely knew about eight months out. But then I only knew two months before mm -hmm. that I was getting a one-year visa. So... By that point, it was like, well, everything's already in motion. I'll just go ahead. And everybody, you know, from top to bottom gives me assurances that, of course, it will be renewed. Um, I don't know. Well, I guess they I, have I, greater I would, I would imagine it probably. I imagine it probably would be. It's probably a formality. You know, One would think. One you know? would think, yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't serve to, you know, uh, inspire or instill confidence in the fact. I mean, imagine you start a new job and they, you know, they tell you you're going to work for two years and then a month in that, you know, two months before you start, they tell you you're only getting one year visa and a month after you come in, they make you re-sign a new contract that says that it's not, you know, it's a little odd. Yeah, well, why did you, why did you quit the job in Dubai? Well, that's a long story, but um, it was time. Uh, there, there was, I had achieved all I could achieve there mm -hmm. and... In, in my estimation. And um, I just felt that, uh, you know, for growth, uh, I needed to get new skills and apply them. And that's, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm more administrative now, mm -hmm. whereas before I was, you know, always lecturing. So. Yeah. So anyway, so what can we talk about here? Uh, since nobody else is going to call, you know, uh, by the way, nobody else call, nobody call. Maybe they'll have a reverse thing. <laughs> don't don't call. Fuck you. I don't want to hear from you. You know. We don't even. Well, have there's one uh, story that was has been very interesting to me. I don't know if anybody else has been following it, but mm -hmm. China built the. I think it's the world's largest uh, telescope now, ground-based telescope. I think it's bigger than the one in Puerto Rico, the Arecibo. Mm -hmm. And I've been fascinated with the FRBs, the fast radio bursts, because <clears throat> they, they can't be identified. I also read yesterday that they, for the first time, they discovered water on an exoplanet. Um, that was yesterday's news. What exoplanet? So I'm, I'm very, very into... What's an exoplanet? A, a planet outside of our solar system. Oh, really? Well, how did they, And they saw that with this telescope? Yeah, they're, I guess they're able to determine the way the, the star's light, you know, ref, well, reflects, well, you see, I, refracts I, I, through I, the atmosphere. I don't understand why you would build a telescope, a big telescope on Earth, when the ultimate telescope is the one that we have orbiting the Earth, simply yeah. because it doesn't have to go through the atmosphere to see anything. When the mm -hmm. stuff that the, uh, what's the name of the telescope? The um, um, Arecibo. No, the one that, Hubble. The, the Hubble. Hubble telescope. Uh, has taken, I don't know if you've seen it, some phenomenal stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, stuff that would, would be impossible for us to do from Earth because they, we, it doesn't have an atmosphere that it has to go through. You know. Yeah. I think there's also one called the, the Kepler as well. Yeah, that's that, yeah. the newest one. Yeah. Ah, okay. I think that's Hubble, actually well, I think searching for exoplanets. In, in fact, yeah. is, is, is uh, Hubble even in operation anymore? I don't think so. I think it finally died. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but. No, it remains in operation. 
Oh, it does. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just haven't heard about it. But I saw some some photographs that were taken by the Hubble, and you just you just you know, in awe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, when we think about space, you know, there, again, I go back to this this series they had called uh, the planets, uh, and it was just amazing, just amazing. I uh, time be, to watch that. Well, because it, you just look at it and you go. How insignificant am I? You know, I'm nothing. I'm a, I'm a speck in, forget a speck in the universe, okay? That's bad enough. I'm a fucking speck in history, <laughs> you know, because they're talking about, oh, uh, Mars, here's what Mars was like 4.5 billion years ago. And you're going, 4.5 billion years ago. How many of my lifetimes is 4.5 billion years it's more, uh, four, four, it's more than 4.5 billion of my lifetimes, I'll tell you that right now, oh. you know. It's just amazing. So, yeah. and, and, and then you think about yourself and you say, I'm here for so far 80 years, who knows how many more years. Uh, and uh, I think I'm, I'm a big fucking deal because the whole world centers around me, right? Until <laughs> you realize that compared to the rest of the universe, you're a piece of shit. You know, and why doesn't Trump know that? Why does Trump think that he's got such a small uh, amount of time here on planet Earth, and what he intends to do with it is make everybody's life miserable? <laughs> and I can't, I can't figure that one out. Who wakes up in the morning and says, "What can I do today to fuck up the e ecology?" Okay. Oh, good. I'll pass this thing. Like, what did he do? He did something today, or that he said he was going to do to stop us from you know, protecting wetlands, you know, because that's not good for business. Well, fuck you. Yeah. It's good for me. <clears throat> yeah, so. uh. Well, talking about Trump, mm -hmm. he's got a bad problem about hiring people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, he took that TV show too seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I want to hire Mark Burnett back. Let's get him, you know, because at least then there'll be some editing. Well, you know something, though? He, he was never part of the administration. You know. Uh, he Mark, should be. Mark Burnett is the guy, though, that we have to thank for Donald Trump because he handed him a TV show. And it wasn't Trump that made that TV show popular. Burnett happened to be a good producer and knew how to make a hit show. He could have done. They could have put, uh, you know, any one of a number of billionaires in that in that seat, and it could have been a hit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Trump likes to think, oh, it's a big hit because of me. It was only a big hit for about one season, and in each success, I auditioned season, for it. Did you really? I did. Yeah. And uh, what the woman, one uh, woman who sat next to me mm -hmm. during the audition phase, she did get accepted. Oh, really? And she ended up on the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Uh, I it was down at the at the Waldorf, I think, there in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, he uh, likes to think, you know, likes to get everybody to think that he had this big hit show for, you know, ten years. The thing was, only the first maybe one or two years did it have a decent rating. After that, it was, in fact, the last season of of his Apprentice was filmed two years earlier. And they just kept it on the shelf for two years before putting it on the air because they were just looking for a, a dead spot in the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the schedule to put that in. That's how bad that show was thought of at NBC. Um, as a matter of fact, my friend um, um, Gilbert Gottfried was on the last season that Trump did, I think. And he did it years before. He did it two years before. I was talking to him. He said, oh, and I did that about a year and a half ago. You know, I said, who wins? He says, I can't tell. Yeah. You know, we can't, we, we're sworn to secrecy. You know, so mm -hmm. I went, well, fuck it. You know. But, I mean, he was never, he was never big in TV, and he thinks he was, uh, you know. Uh, but that's his reality, you yeah. know, and he... 
he you know foists that reality on others it's it's an amazing trick you know if you think about it it's you deny everything you parcel out specific types of information mm -hmm. and then you only believe one part of it and just push that right I, I don't understand it but for some reason it is it is really hot in here tonight and I can't figure out why mm. some of the uh, humidity is making its way through my iPad Wait, but what's, into, what's the temperature hold on a second let me look at the temperature the temperature is 64 degrees and yet in here Alexa, what is the temperature huh 64 degrees sorry i couldn't find your location oh if you can update your full <laughs> Oops, address okay yeah she settings in the alexa app, <laughs> I, I every I single day i have to tell her where i am where she can't remember for where now, i am weather for what location <laughs> kuala lumpur right now in kuala lumpur malaysia it's 29 degrees celsius today Expect a high of 32 degrees. Oh, that's very nice. And she doesn't even speak Kuala Lumpurian. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, that will be the high today mm -hmm. will be 89.6 degrees. Uh, Alexa? Uh, did, she, did she hear me? Really? Uh, Alexa, uh, play tune in Great American Broadcast. What do you want me to play? Great American Broadcast. What's the announcement? <laughs> uh, stop. Go home. Okay. I'll Announcing. Oh. oh no. No. Yes. Alexa, stop. Okay. Alexa, okay. go home. Let me let me try now. Uh, <clears throat> Alexa, tune in. No, she's offline. Oh. <laughs> she's screwing up. Oh, really? I gotta stop that because actually the problem is I have a show at my mom's house, so it's eleven thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. So that would have announced to her it might wake her up. Oh, I, I have see. to be careful. I have yeah. to be careful. Oh, and it's on the same account. Yeah, because uh, my mom wouldn't be able to negotiate all of that. You know. Mm -hmm. I love that show because you can use Skype on the show. And uh, I my my business manager calls me all the time on my Skype account my other you skype mean, account and i have it linked into my uh, into my show and he it comes up on there the skype oh call. yeah okay i didn't know you could do that oh yeah oh yeah um you just have to teach it all these tricks you know uh so let's see what else can we talk about folks we got about 25 minutes left here um uh, let's see. Trump hasn't. Is is it my imagination, or has Trump been kind of minding his p's and q's this week? I, I haven't heard much from him, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's the like last two weeks or so. I haven't really heard very much. It's like he's laying low. I mean, he made comments on the Bolton thing and so on, but he's not doing any tweets that are obnoxious, <clears throat> particularly. Or would you disagree, Charlie? Have you read any of his I have tweets? I've followed them. I've been busy. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, well, I don't even. I oh, see. Uh, now we're now we're losing him. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, yeah, I, uh, I he just seems to be minding his p's and q's a little bit lately, and I don't know if somebody's gotten to him and said, "Listen, if you want to win the next election, you better start changing the way you're doing business here, because it's not it's not going over well." He caught a lot of flack about that Taliban stuff. Uh, um, did he get flack about it? I mean, to begin with, he says, I called it off. Now, we don't know that he ever called it on. You know, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't really know the truth of what went on there. You know, uh, maybe he, he did, did actually ask them to be part of his, uh, come down to Camp David and have a little talk. And then... Other people were telling him, hey, you know, that's not a good idea. 9-11. Huh? <laughs> Don't recommend just before 9-11. Well, that's, that's uh, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that is definitely a possibility that that is exactly the thing they were thinking of. You don't want to invite the Taliban to Camp David on 
Oh, let's go, let's go out and see where the planes crashed at the Pentagon. Come on, guys. Let's. Uh, we'll, we'll pick you up in an hour airplane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question, uh, and this is a this is an important one, is how long do we keep bemoaning 9/11? In other words, every 9/11. Down at ground zero, they read all those names. And this has been going on for what? How many years is it now? 18. 18 years. Isn't there a point at which you stop doing that and you start moving ahead? You know, am I wrong about this or is this, uh, Jeff, how do you feel about it? You know, when I, I the, the other day I listened to, a little bit about it on TV, and it, it still really bothers me a lot uh, that so many people got killed and and, and all those people got sick. And oh no, I, nobody, nobody's saying it wasn't terrible, but how yeah, long do on. you keep? Uh, de- how do you, how long do you keep? Uh, how can I put it? Uh, bemoaning it, all right, mm-hmm. and just move on and say, look. Here, here's what we've done, which has been good. We rebuilt. You know, you wouldn't know that 9-11 had taken place down there. We rebuilt that whole area. And we're going on with our lives. And isn't that the tribute that needs to be done? You know, that we don't just stop and go, oh, my God, oh, what do we do? Oh, we were hit with the planes and everything like that. You know, it was a horrible tragedy. But then again, Americans have never seen anything like that here. Although, you know, it did have Oklahoma City. That wasn't exactly the same, but it certainly was an act of terrorism, of white terrorism. But, uh, you know, we, we just don't have the kind of situation that they had, uh, uh, that we had with 9-11. Those things don't happen here. Uh, and uh, they did happen. I mean, uh, what I have to say is, what are the chances that both those planes were going to hit? You know, I mean, I would imagine that uh, Osama bin Laden was sitting over there in a cave in Tora Bora uh, saying, fuck, what do we do now? We didn't expect this to happen. You know, they thought they might poke a hole in those buildings, but they didn't think the whole thing, both of them were going to come down. <coughs> I mean, I think that exceeded anybody's expectations. Mm, you're probably right there on that. Yeah. How do you feel about those people who feel that there never was a plane that hit the Pentagon? They're crazy. Well, they never, they, they, you never saw any residue of plane in that, in that destruction. You saw the destruction, which could have been caused by any number of things. But people to this day, some of them don't believe that it was actually a plane that hit the Pentagon. Then what happened to that plane? Those people have never shown up. Well, you're right. You're right. There was a plane missing. So it had to be that plane. But, I mean, the one that hit Shanksville, weren't there parts of plane all over the place? Oh, yeah. You all know. over the place. So, I mean, there, there's always been a lot of suspicion about what happened at the Pentagon. Shanksville, no problem at all, you know. Um, and and by the way, quite a story of what those people went through. You know. Yeah, it was terrific. Uh, what what they did. I mean, they didn't. They, if we're gonna die, we may as well die. Making yeah. sure these people go with us. Anyway, it it, it was. Uh, but the whole the whole situation was terrible, and we've never had anything like that happen in America. And I think that's what hit us so badly. But, you know, uh, in Europe, uh, people dying all the time from this kind of thing. Not in the same numbers, but I would imagine if you took the total numbers, uh, they, come, they come pretty close, you know. But we're just not used to it here. And, by the way, it's never happened again. Although it, we have had a certain amount of, uh, of uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, uh, terrorism, it's been white terrorism in this country. You know, the bombings of, uh, of synagogues and churches and, yeah. and uh, what happened in El Paso 
and um, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, you know. But those are all at the hands of white people, you know. For all that the Donald Trump is afraid of Islamics, the people who are causing us the most trouble are white supremacists, right? White wing, right wingers who listen to what Trump has to say. And I don't care what anybody says. I put the I put El Paso at the at the feet of of Donald Trump. I'm just mm-hmm. not you know I'm just not going to accept that that guy wasn't influenced by Donald Trump. You know, so. Anyway, so nobody else is going to call. That's amazing. I thought it was just yeah, there's yeah. only 20 minutes left. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what to do for the next 20 minutes. I, I, you know, when I have people talking to each other and fighting with each other, then it, it yeah. you know, it's a little easier to keep it together. Uh, but uh, well, you know, huh? I still think that Donald Trump will win. I don't see anybody in the, you know, the Democratic field that can really take him on. I, I do find it interesting. He's not Trump is not going to debate Sanford or uh, Walsh or who, who the other. There are three guys who want to challenge him in the Republican. And there are three states that said they're not going to even open it up for... They're not going to have primaries. primaries. They're not even going to have primaries. And then there was another thing. Trump is launching a... There's a pro-Trump social media site that's launching. So, I mean, this is... It is really Orwellian, if you think about it. Well, you know, I mean... I think, you know, Trump could lose. And he could lose based upon... The you know he does not have a great approval rating. His approval rating has stayed well below fifty percent for all of his term, and yep. and most presidents who run for office again have never have at least at some point gone over fifty percent. So there is a great yeah, amount of dissatisfaction with Trump. Now, how much that's going to uh, uh, create in a, a groundswell of people saying, well, we don't want him to be president again. Is, no, is questionable. Pe- th- those are not the people who are voting. Mm-hmm. I mean, some may be, but it's not targeted. He just has to. He just has to target a few states with the, the electoral votes. You know, it's all pretty much cut and dried. Uh, and then there are just a couple of battleground areas. And if he just focuses his money and attention on those, he well, could the, do it. The Democrats. I mean, the Democrats won the last election. After. You know, but he didn't win. He, didn't the, he, he only won the presidency by 70,000. I've and 30 million votes to get cast. He won 70,000 votes in, in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. He's going to get those votes. Those people have been screwed royally by, by uh, Trump, and they're not going to vote. He's going to lose all three of those states, and I think he's going to lose a bunch more. I think Democrats will win 40 states. I just, you know, there are those who think, like my wife thinks, that Trump's going to win. But she's got an oh, woe is me concept about this. Okay. Uh, I, I think the Democrats have to run the right candidate. I don't think Biden is the right candidate. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that I think Elizabeth Warren <laughs> may be the right candidate because she's snarky enough not to let Trump get away with anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she would be much tougher in a debate for Trump than Hillary Clinton ever was because Elizabeth Warren isn't going to be nice, you know. Uh, so I think she's the, she's got the best shot. Uh, you know, I can't see that Bernie Sanders has got a shot. I mean, Bernie is, God, if anybody could look older than Joe Biden, it's Bernie, you know. And tonight, he, there's something wrong with his voice. He had, like, uh, laryngitis or something, and he was croaking his way through the whole, uh, the whole thing. Uh, I don't know that he... Uh, uh, I, I think he's beatable, but I think it's a question of whether there's anybody running right now who could beat him. Uh, uh, more of an unknown somewhere along the line would probably be more capable of beating him because they don't carry with them any of the, of the baggage that a seasoned professional politician has, you know. I mean, people like Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, they all have baggage. Oh, here comes Tom Yamaguchi. Oh, Tom's coming to save the day for the, at the last minute here. 
I, I don't know why uh, it's been quiet tonight, but let me just get uh, Tom's picture in there, and we'll uh, we'll get him. Uh, uh, there we go. There's Tom. Hello, Tom. Hi. What? I just I actually just got off of a conference call, so I just joined, yeah. and I heard you talking about uh, the debate. I watched the first half of it and missed it, but I. Uh, I was yeah I was really impressed with uh, with uh, with Elizabeth Warren again and uh, I think the one thing that uh, that I would say you know is that you know we're 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 we're, we're so afraid uh, I I think that can hurt us more than than the fact that just we we need we need to be able to have a candidate that can excite us. Mm -hmm. I think the the problem with with 2016, one of the big problems with 2016 is we just tried we just played it too safe, yeah. and and try to second guess ourselves. And if we second guess ourselves, I think we'll only make you know we'll only get in trouble again. Uh, a lot of the problem was that people just didn't show up, and they were not inspired, and uh, they were turned off. I think uh, that Hillary was maybe the worst candidate you could have come up with. You know, um, and, well, I think, that, and I'll tell you, she to me, she would have made the best president of all. Of them. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, but it, yeah, there were some problems with, with 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 there were some strategic errors made, and one of them was it playing it safe, and believing that Republicans would uh, abandon Trump, and come over to her side. So, she played for getting those Republicans that in the end. They were just going to vote for. They were not no way they were going to vote for Democrat. Well, uh, you okay. know, I often said that Hillary could have maybe won that election, although she did with the well, popular. She did, yeah. You know, yeah. but she could have won that election if at that second debate, when he was kind of following her around. Yeah. I mean, like a shark, right? If she had just turned around and looked at him and said, "Sit down and let me talk," don't. You're you're getting you're creeping me out by stalking me. If she had just taken a stand or something like that yeah. in one of those debates, I think she would have won. But she didn't. Another, she was mousy. Another thing is, if instead of of choosing uh, uh, what's his name, and what's his name, Jim, Kane, yeah, Kane, Tim Kane, what if she had chosen Elizabeth Warren? To be yeah. to be her running mate. Yeah, but they would have been. That would have they really, been that really. Yeah. That would have really changed the yeah. changed the parameters. Well, a lot. It, it certainly would have uh, congealed the uh, the female vote. There's no question about that. But there are probably people politically who said bad idea, you know, because well, two women you know, on I the think same it was ticket. A question of not taking. You know, she didn't want to take any risks. Yeah. And that was a risk worth taking. Uh, you know, the the thing was, you know, in um, in 2016, there was a there was an effort to actually to uh, draft Elizabeth Warren, yeah. uh, the the uh, what you call it, uh, Howard Dean's group, uh, uh, Democracy Democracy for America, mm -hmm. were actually trying to recruit uh, Warren. And uh, she said, "No, I didn't want to. I don't want to run." And at the time, I thought, "Well, either she really, really doesn't want to run president, or she just doesn't want to run against Hillary." And it obviously turns out, yeah. it was obviously turned out to be the latter. Yeah. And yeah. and so Bernie Sanders chomped it to to fill that that void. Yeah. You know, you know. So yeah, I think a a, a, a uh, you know a Clinton. Uh, Warren can take it, could have, could have been, made a big difference. All right, let's say we have Elizabeth Warren, okay? And I agree with you. I mean, I, I for, the, for quite a while now, have looked upon her as maybe the best bet. She certainly, you know, when you hear her talk, I think she kind of convinces you because she's smart, because she has ideas, she speaks them well, she mm -hmm. argues them well, um, and 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 she's gotten past the point of just being kind of off-putting. She's not off-putting anymore. There's something kind of likable about her. Uh, not in an attractive way. She's not a terribly attractive woman, but she what? she she. She looks bad to me. <laughs> huh? She doesn't look bad to me. Well, not and my not my not, my not my not my type, uh, but. 
<clears throat> uh, then again, I would. I, you say, well, you wouldn't say that about a guy. Yeah, I would. I think uh, Bernie's too craggy at this point to be president, and so's Biden. You know, uh, I, if I were to pick a younger person, Cory Booker tonight was outstanding. Oh you know? yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and so here's the here's the question. I think it's going to be Elizabeth Warren. I really do, unless Biden, you know, buys the election somehow. Um, if it is Elizabeth Warren, who should her running mate be? Well, it could be Booker, could be Harris. Uh huh. I mean, do you think it, it could be it one could of be those? Castro. Buddha Jag, Buddha Jag. Buddha Jag. I think he'd be a good candidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he would be a good vice presidential choice. Um. Uh, but certainly. Um, uh, Biden is not the answer. You know what? I, you know what I did. I, I was watching this uh, thing. Sixty Minutes last Sunday did a tribute to Steve Croft, who's leaving yeah. Sixty Minutes. And sure, one of the great. things he did that made him uh, well known was that he interviewed Obama. I think sixteen times. Uh, he, he he had an ongoing relationship with Obama. And she said, well, you know, was it, a, was it a friendship or whatever? He says, no, it was reporter and, and, and subject. He said, and we, we maintain that throughout his entire eight years. Uh, and they showed clips of Obama. And I sat there going, God, I miss that. Yeah. You know, I, I, miss, I miss just the fact that when he walked, he looked presidential, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and he had a sense of humor about him, and he had a, 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 an intelligence. And what Croft said that was very interesting, is he said, you know, when you interview politicians, he says, I hate interviewing politicians. Because you ask them a question, and then they look over at one of their um, associates, and they go, what, 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 you know, what's the answer to that question? Do you know what that's all about? Blah, 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 blah. He said, I never had to do that with Obama. He said he knew everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, he never had any assistants standing by to help him out with the interview or anything like that. And he would answer any question I threw at him. And he didn't have to look at an assistant or a book or a, some notes he had or anything like that. And I just went, wow, I wish we had that. You know, that's what we're missing. What we're missing is, is also huh? rather, I mean, boring. And he, he definitely wasn't a media. Uh, he didn't help the media out very much. Well, you would go for weeks without hearing about Obama. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, whereas Trump tries, gets up in the morning and says, how can I be the subject, the topic of conversation today? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, but I, I just miss that. Maybe it's just I miss somebody who appreciates being president of the United States and what that offer is, or that office is. And, and someone who has respect for that office. You know, we were, all, we were all taught when we were growing up in school that we should respect the presidency. Mm -hmm. And now we have a president who doesn't. You know, and, and where's that at? Tom, you look uh, quizzical. Yeah, I would just say, you know, I, I just re remember uh, when he was running, a number of us had, had criticisms about his lack of experience, mm -hmm. you know. And yet, at the same time, I mean, <laughs> talk about lack of experience and, and the consequences of that. I mean, Obama came with a lot of, you know, a lot of skills, you know, relevant skills to the job. I mean, very knowledgeable the Constitution and actually taught constitutional law uh, is, is certainly his, his uh, experience as a, as a, you know, community organizer. I mean, these all kind of... You know, yeah, they, I was one of the people that... opposed to a Trump, mm -hmm. what did he do before running for... I mean, he was not went involved in any kind of, of, of civic activity. His only political activity was writing checks, you know? He was and, a reality star. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, the thing is that uh, I was one of the first people to criticize uh, uh, Obama for his lack of experience, and I think it really showed in his first term. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but in his second term, it showed mm -hmm. that he was very studious and learned his job. Okay, and and that's what I appreciated. And and Steve Croft, who is 
they bring up in this thing was a superb writer, wrote an introduction to one of the first pieces he ever did on Obama. And they said, Barack Obama is the candidate for, uh, is running for, uh, is trying to become the candidate for president of the United States. Uh, he's half black, half white, and all green. <laughs> he said, that's his experience. You know, he's, he's green. Uh, I didn't say it right, but that's essentially what he said. You know, half black, half white, and all green. You know, that he didn't, he didn't really have the experience. In fact, I remember a picture of, um, of Obama walking up the steps to the, uh, to the Senate. And um, the caption, I think, read, what do you think of a guy who's running for president who, who's only who has very little experience at all in, in government. That in fact, when he ran, he had only been senator for two years. Yep. You know, so but they said, how, the how, how, how do you expect a guy to be president who knows nothing about the running of the country? Well, you know. He uh, certainly has legislative experience through, through the state of, you know, Illinois. Yeah, he was a state senator in Illinois for four yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, why? Why is it, well? Of course, Trump is the uh, is the exception to the rule. But most of the time, our pool of people that we use to run for president always come out of politics. We've had. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of any other president beside Trump who hasn't been in some form of politics. Eisenhower maybe because he was a general. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, who? You know. Um, uh, I mean, if Ulysses S. Grant was a was a general, okay, yeah. all right, you know. Well, traditionally, I mean, up into you know in the nineteenth century, that's a lot of where a lot of presidents came from. You know, a lot of a lot of presidents in the mid nineteenth century came directly out of the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but uh, yeah, so so in this century, Eisenhower is the sort of the fluke, yeah. and he's the last general we've actually had. And most of them have come out of civilian service. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so, but uh, most of the next governors too. Well, yeah. uh, most of the most. Am I right or wrong? But most of the presidents we've had, at least who have been decent pre presidents, have been governors, <laughs> yeah. not senators. Uh, and the reason is, is that they come from running. You know, the running being a president is a step up from being a governor. You, you, you're in charge of yeah. the same thing, same kind of things, and you have to deal with the same kind of things on a day-to-day -day basis. The only thing is with president, it's on a national basis as opposed to a local basis. So it's a great training ground for anybody who's going to be president. Um, we've had some, have we had any senators became president? Um, well, you know, well, of Bob, course we had Bob, Obama, we had Obama, but I think he was the first one no, since, since well, no, since since LBJ, well, who who had been a senator, but uh, also uh, uh, well, Kennedy. Nixon was the senator. Yeah, but he's not yeah. a vice president. Yeah, but he been a vi he went from vice president. Yeah, he was vice president. Yeah, his, his last. Same with Johnson. Johnson was vice president. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you know, it, it, it's it's really. Uh, 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 but it, it, governors usually make the best presidents, I think. Yeah. You know, but uh, cer but certainly not reality show hosts. Yeah, the, quickly. Tom. So, did, did, did what? Well, do you respond to that to Andrew Yang the little contest there? Well, I was trying to buy my vote, you know, and and as I said earlier, because you probably weren't listening, if he wants to buy my vote, I'm willing to sell it. Okay. Oh. You know. <laughs> Uh, you know, if he wants to give me a thousand dollars a month to vote for his little ass, I will. I'll be happy to. You know? All right. <laughs> anyway, hey, that's it. We've kind of run out of time. I thank our uh, our our major panel here, which have been Bree in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Wave Bree. I think he's working he's, now. He's working. Uh, 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 and 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 Charlie down there in uh, Arizona. We got Jeff up there in Connecticut and out there in. Uh, 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 what's your exact Berkeley. location, Tom? Berkeley. Berkeley. Uh, in Berkeley, California, is Tom Yamaguchi. And I think if everybody will just give us a big wave goodbye, I'll wave back at them, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, there goes our citizen panel. And thank you guys for uh, being with me tonight. Uh, 
It's been a uh, slower than usual night, but that's the way things go. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He's got a thing called The Intersection. That comes up next over most of the same gab net. Tomorrow night, uh, Damian Chaplin will be here at 9.30, closely followed by a guy named Alex Bennett, who will be here tomorrow night, yes, you know when, 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.